The P30 Pro is back, and it's actually gotten better since launch. The phone has had updates to improve image quality, add new features, and even increase efficiency. So, Huawei asked me if I'd film an extreme day in the life with this updated phone, but with a twist. This thing is gonna span pretty much two full days, and so as well as using the phone to showcase some of the new features, we're gonna try and do it all on one charge. I had about an hour to kill before the car came, and before I knew it, we were off. And let me just tell you, the stuff we're about to do on this trip is stuff I never thought I would do. It is genuinely crazy. And so to do this, we're headed from England all the way to Wales. Now, that journey itself is about three to three and a half hours, and so I spent about an hour in total on the phone itself, doing a combination of some really bad chess, and then taking photos and videos on the phone's camera, some of which you're seeing here. We also stopped off on the way a bit, and um, before we started again, used the P30 Pro for about 10 minutes of navigation, and also played around with the new and improved fingerprint scanner. Both the speed and the reliability are now better. It wasn't long before we lost the ability to actually pronounce the places we were entering, and so we knew we were close to Wales. Now, there are three massive activities we're about to do on this trip, and each of them is going to show you some feature of the P30 Pro that you might not have seen before. And so, for the first one, we arrived in what seems like a pretty empty Welsh slate quarry, for something they call subterranean trampolining. You head down underground into these pretty chilly, pretty dark looking caves, where pretty much the first thing I did, being the massive camera nerd that I am, is sat down and took a night mode photo. This is also, funnily enough, one of those areas where the finish on the back of the phone just completely comes to life. The trampoline park itself is pretty surreal. It's this massive hollowed out cavern with nets all over the place that you start to bounce on. And it does not feel safe for the first five minutes, but when you get used to it, Incredible, genuinely. Just before we got out of there, the cave walls themselves were just asking to be photographed. Using the super macro mode, I managed to get this photo of a single water drop about to fall from the ceiling. I was feeling pretty proud of myself at this point, up until I realized that I had the entire imprint of the net I'd just fallen on on the back of my shirt. Okay, so that entire setup was completely surreal. But as far as low light goes, we can actually get lower than that. And just before we do, we're out here in beautiful Wales. Let's go for a bit of a walk. So whilst we're waiting for it to get dark so we could head to event number two, we took a bit of a walk. We found this nice little waterfall, yet another slate quarry, and it was all happening whilst the sun was slowly setting in the background. Kind of beautiful. Now, one of the other things that's massively improved in this phone since launch is AR measure. So you might know the phone has its own dedicated time of flight sensor. It uses that to accurately map out the distances between real world objects. And I remember this not being my favorite feature at launch, but it works far better now. So for this second activity, this second crazy experience to actually work, we need it to be dark. And so just to sort of stall some time, we find this really nice little bar slash pub place that's near where we need to go. And the view from there is incredible. In fact, I actually took one of my favorite smartphone photos ever standing at this spot. I gave it a quick edit in Lightroom and it looked even better, but little did I realize I was about to capture something way better. As the light started to dip, we headed to our second location. We were gonna go to something called a Dark Sky Reserve, a specific designated area where artificial light pollution is pretty much non-existent. And on the way, I was on Lightroom just editing a few of the photos we'd taken earlier. All right, so we've reached the Dark Sky Reserve now, and this place is so quiet, you can pretty much whisper and people can hear you clearly. It's still a little bit light to see the dark sky and the stars and stuff properly, so we're just basically gonna set up camp for a couple of hours, play around with the phone and the camera, and then we'll get to work on that. Okay, all I wanna say is just listen to this place. It's one of the most serene things I've ever experienced. Pretty much the only thing you can hear is just the gentle sound of water. It was completely breathtaking, but we did have one problem. All right, so it's already 10 p.m. and it is nowhere near dark enough to do any kind of night sky shooting. So we're just gonna basically camp out for a couple more hours and hopefully we'll see some kind of storage in the sky. And sure enough, eventually it did start to get dark. And in fact, so dark, because remember, there are no artificial lights around here that I managed to trip and fall down a hill. Oh mate, you're right. Oh my God, Aaron, are you okay? All good though, and what happens next completely made up for it. 
So, you've probably heard of Night Mode. The P30 Pro takes incredible shots in the dark. But, set your phone upon a tripod and open up something called Star Trails Mode, and you can take it to the next level. Alright, so we just got one shot of the stars, and I'm blown away. I, I, I can't wait to show it to you. It is one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in my life. So, we left the phone to capture for around about 8 minutes, and in this time, because the Earth is moving slowly on its axes, the phone captures the relative movement of the stars. For a point of reference, this is what the Galaxy S10's shot looked like, using the phone's night mode. We're talking a level of darkness where you can barely see meters in front of you. Anyways, this is what the P30 Pro managed to capture. And let me tell you, this was such a surreal moment, nobody could believe what came out of this camera. After a little edit on Lightroom, the result went from wow, incredible jaw-dropping to just completely unprecedented. We thought maybe if you zoom in, you'll be able to spot some obvious notable flaw in it, but that just wasn't the case. And this right here is my best edited version of both of these shots. On the left is the P30 Pro, on the right is the S10 5G. And here's the thing, that one wasn't even my favourite. We managed to take two more shots while we were here, this one which captures a little bit more of the colour in the sky, especially with a bit of editing to draw it out, and then this one, for which we just stuck the phone facing directly upwards, no interference, just the phone to the sky. And if we zoom in and you look closely, you can actually see the points where shooting stars have come and crossed the paths of the static stars. The whole thing was such a blur, and before I knew it, we were back at it again the next morning. Alright, so start of day two, and even though the phone was on all night, it hasn't lost a lot of battery, which is probably a good thing because we're just under 30% right now. I had a pretty sizable breakfast, but trust me when I say I was gonna need it today. And just before we headed to extreme activity number three, we couldn't leave without at least seeing the famous pebble beaches of Landudno in Wales. We gave the super slow motion video another stab with this clip right here of me attempting to skim a rock. Anyways, it wasn't long before we were at the third activity, which is actually world's fastest zipline through, you might have guessed, a Welsh slate quarry. Okay, so we're at the uh, the zipline and it looks like we've got one tier over here, kind of baby level zipline, but then the one I'm going to be going on is round about there. So yeah, it's going to be good. All pretty terrifying stuff and of course it wasn't long before we were right at the top with, i got to say, a pretty incredible view. They didn't sadly allow me to mount a P30 Pro onto my forehead, but we did manage to get some footage using dual view from the waiting area, where we managed to get the 5 times zoom on one side and then the wide angle zoom on the other side. The way back was a pretty long one and battery life was running out as it was, so I kept the usage light. I did a little bit of editing of some of my favourite shots and a little bit of social media as well. When I got back, one of the first things I saw was the amusing sight of my cat trying to figure out what on earth a robot vacuum cleaner was doing in its territory. I opened up the Send Anywhere application in order to transfer the 10 gigs or so of footage that I got on the phone to my laptop so I could start editing this video. And that, I gotta say, did take quite a significant toll on the phone's battery. And so, by the time it reached about 9.40pm, the phone was just about to go. So I got a quick look at some of the battery usage stats over this period. It's been on medium power saving for this trip, and that's definitely been one of the contributing factors for how on earth we've managed to get it to last two extreme days of use. What an insane trip. 